One thing that matters to us here at Cable 14 is the High School Cooperative Education Program. And joining me now is Yan Pearson, co-op teacher at Waterdown District High School. Yan, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks so much for having me. So we're going to talk co-op. I'm going to start by saying if I were Minister of Education, I would make co-op mandatory for every high school student. Well, what's interesting is that we both have this background. You were a former educator, and uh, I would have to say I would agree with you on that. Uh, the other conversation we had was, you know, the importance of physical activity, and it used to be mandatory in every grade in high school. Right. Um, they brought it down to just grade nine. But I feel the same about cooperative education because the experience itself is so real. Um, it gives those students an opportunity to, um, you know, test the waters, so to speak. Right. So in for something students, they're interested in. So for parents out there that might not be familiar with the co-op program, uh, a student can enter uh, a co-op program starting from what grade? Most commonly, students started in grade 11. Um, so we try to give them some awareness where they come to high school in grade nine. Um, there are possible opportunities to start a little bit earlier, but most commonly grade 11 and grade 12. And that 12. makes sense, right? Because as students are approaching their senior years of high school, their mind is going beyond that, right? And they start thinking a little bit about careers, and this would be a good time to do that. Yeah, 100%. Our segue is, um, you know, in grade 10, they actually take a careers class, like a formal class that they sit in for a semester. So that's sort of a good area where they start to investigate some of their interests. And then from there, we try to segue into, you know, having them choose co-op on their option sheet. Right. Um, and then, you know, then coming to see us and have an interview in terms of finding out what they're interested in doing. So even in uh, having a situation where a student has to organize their transportation, it's an opportun opportunity to learn some independence. Exactly. No, exactly. So an uh, interesting, funny example was, you know, some of our students don't have the transportation, so we try to get them in. I, I teach at the Waterdown District High School, so we try to get them in the Waterdown community. In one particular case, um, this semester, we have a young man who's helping out in the kitchen at uh, Turtle Jack's in Waterdown. And getting there on time was one of the issues a little bit. So, <laughs> a challenge maybe? <laughs> yeah, I reached out to my former school in the East End, uh, Sir Winston Churchill, and I, I think you were over that way as well uh, at one point in time. They have a class called Bikeology, so they fix up bikes. So I thought, why don't I reach out to that teacher? Let's try and attach this co-op student to a bike Oh, Let's get them a bike. Great idea. So now there's no excuse. <laughs> what collaboration. So yeah. once that interview happens, um, and I guess a, a, a type of co-op placement is selected, then what happens? That's right. So usually in grade 11, they'll probably take a part-time co-op, which is a two credit. So that would be um, three hours either in the morning or three hours in the afternoon. Do they have a choice? Um, they do have a choice. In grade 11, they could go full-time co-op as well, which means they're essentially once they're at the workplace, they're really not at school. Mm -hmm. um, there's a program called Building Careers from the Ground Up we have right now. Oh, I love where, that. Where um, students, um, you know, there's an application process if they get selected. They basically work at building sites for Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. They work on a house. Um, sometimes they're at the completion stage of the house and the house is allocated to a, you know, a family in need. So that would be an example of a full-time co-op. A lot of our trades co-ops are full-time. Electricians are on the road, mm -hmm. plumbers are on the road, so sometimes they don't have a time to backtrack and pick up a student. The student may meet them at the site and, and spend the entire day working alongside them. So you've made, mentioned uh, examples with the trades, and while you know the trades are obviously uh, mm -hmm. a very valued yeah. uh, pathway, yep. what other sorts of co-op placements can students get? Yeah, some really popular ones are working with animals, possibly nonprofit, um, Flamborough Animal Adoptions. We um, we tap into utilizing that area. Um, veterinarians, uh, vet techs, quite often. I've over the last few years, we've had a few young ladies who are pretty clear, clearly very intelligent and mm -hmm. want to be vets and they know what it takes so they worked with vets. Mm -hmm. um, next semester we have another student interested in law so we've partnered up um, that student uh, in, in two law firms. Um, mm -hmm. So really the sky's the limit. Um, so any sector really? Yeah any sector uh, if you bring it to us and we don't have a contact my colleague and I um, will cold call and and and, and try and try and reach out to the mm -hmm. right the right people. 
And, and to be fair, like a lot of employers are starting to come into the school and calling us and, and saying, hey, we'd love to mentor a student. We'd love to show them, you know, what, our, what, what this workspace is about. And what we're seeing, um, I don't know if it's post-COVID, but there are a lot of job opportunities out there. Like, there are a lot of job opportunities. And um, employers are really, really trying to find the right people mm -hmm. for them. Not everybody has started working yet. Not everybody has had a part-time job yet. So this is their f uh, them dipping their toes in the working world. Um, so it can you know, be a little bit scary, though. It's for very them, right? scary, it but can that's be. okay. It they can they be. need to have that courage. That's right. Uh, to be able to in really embrace everything that a co-op placement can yes. offer them. Yeah, and like you said, um, one once they complete it, their confidence level. <gasps> Oh, absolutely. It's higher, right? So they're, they're more empowered to, okay, maybe I'll try this opportunity, right? You can't get that from a classroom. And that's why I think co-op is so important to every right. student's uh, you know, high school experience. Even for a student who comes to the conclusion that their pathway is not what they thought it was going to be. Great point. Then it's better to find out now in grade 100%. 11 or maybe even grade 12 yeah. than later after you spend you know, thousands of dollars at a program, right? Yeah, that's, that's really one of, the, um, one of the angles that we're trying to accomplish as well in terms of, you know, is this really what you want to do? Or is, it, is there something there that's even more specific that you prefer to mm -hmm. do? Um, so yeah, it's discovery, like finding, finding out if, if this is you before you go and you know, go to post-secondary, right. which by the way, post-secondary is jumping on the co-op bandwagon too, right? The colleges and uh, universities realize how important um, that practical experiential aspect of a course is, not just theory. Um, they realize, you know, that's, that's what best trains are. Yeah. are and employers our youth. are looking for that too, right? Yeah. They value the co-op experience at a college or university level as well. Yeah. Well, absolutely. this is uh, why I would make it mandatory. You know, it's such a, a valued experience for every high school. Right. Um, and if parents have any questions, they can reach out to their guidance counselors and co-op teachers right. and really support their children in, like you said, exploring and finding out what's out there. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I think we're absolutely on the same team. Absolutely. Because <laughs> you've educated, so I thought maybe we could do a little team oh, thing. Oh my gosh, I and love get it! Our, get our winter toques out. Okay, I'm going to put mine on. I love it. Well, thank you very much. How's that look? Thank you. I love do we it. look good? Where do See we look? See what it says? Co-op. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Ian. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Well, that's all the time we have on this episode. I hope you like my hat. Coming up on the next THN i3, a user-friendly drug screening technology with the goal of keeping our roads safe. And as usual, our deeper dive segment and a whole lot more. Remember, we want you to stay connected with us. Visit our show page at cable14.com and you can be part of the conversations with us on Twitter at THN on Cable 14. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.